I want to preach a simple message this morning to encourage you. And uh, it's simply entitled, Inhale. Inhale. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And just for the record, I did not color coordinate my shirt and tie with this screen. I, that, that is a 100% accident, but it does look pretty cool, I think. So uh, maybe that's something I need to think about in the future. So that way you can notice what I'm wearing. You know, most of you don't. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. One simple verse this morning. It says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Let's pray. Father, I am so grateful that we have an awesome church to come worship in. And I am so thankful to be surrounded by people who love you, who worship you and adore you. Jesus, however, I know that in our congregation there's people that are hurting, people that are miserable, people that life has just been unfair to, that need a word of encouragement. And I pray, God, that you minister to these people today. God, let those who are on the mountaintop also feel your touch today. Let those deep in the valley not be too far away for you to reach down and rescue them. Touch, I pray now in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. We see in our text where God makes a dirt man and he breathes into his nostrils a life. And I have a very simple message this morning. I know that life, times get busy and times are hard. It is the season to be jolly. But not only is it the season to be jolly, it's the season to be stressful and the season to be distressed and the season to be depressed and the season to be miserable and the season to be lonely. I realize that through all of this stuff, there's going to be all kind of activities going on. And I want to encourage you today to stop and inhale. Sometimes you have to be able to stop and inhale. The devil is trying to take your joy. He's trying to take your peace. He's trying to take your life. But God is breathing life into you. The enemy loves to cause chaos and confusion. The enemy loves to cause so many activities that you get stressed out and worried out and, and you become overwhelmed with everything that is going on in your life. You see, the enemy wants to destroy you, but God is breathing. He's blowing life in your direction. This morning, stop and inhale. Allow the breath of God to come from heaven back into your dry nostrils and bring life back into a situation that seems dead and hopeless. Amen. 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 Job chapter 33 verse 4 says, The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. The breath of the Almighty has given me life. Let me remind you, first of all, that God has created you just the way you are. You're created in the image of God, and His breath has come, and He's given you life. You need to understand this morning, this devil is trying to make you feel like you're nobody, that you're unimportant, that you're not needed, but you are a somebody. God loves you so much that He's still in your, in your life, and He's still working on you. Are you in the middle of a tornado this morning? Is everything twisting and out of control? Are the objects of life flying out of, your, out of your mind and you're in the middle of trauma? Stop and inhale. God is still breathing life into you. I know it looks like it's, you're going down. I know it looks like the pieces are broken. I know it looks like everything is out of control. But in reality, God is trying to breathe life into you. But instead of running wild open and in a fast-paced world, listen, we have been tricked into believing we need to burn the candles at all three ends if that's possible. I like to do it too. At the front, at the back, and in the middle. But sometimes in life, you've got to stop and inhale. Sometimes you need a time of refreshing from the Lord. Sometimes you need a revival spirit to resurrect you. Sometimes even in the middle of a holiday season, you need to stop and inhale. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 42 verse 5 through verse 10. Thus saith the Lord, He that created the heavens and stretched them out, He that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, He that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and the Spirit to them but walk there. And notice, where does your breath come from? It comes from the Lord. Yes. Let me tell you, you have a purpose this morning. Verse 6, I the Lord have called thee in righteousness. I will hold thine hand and I will keep thee and I will give thee for a lie. Let's stop there before I get into that scripture any further. Notice what the Lord says, I have called thee into righteousness. I will hold your hand. Everybody hold your hand up. 
Listen, you need to understand that hand looks like it's held up in the air by itself. But when you're trusting God, God is reaching down from heaven. He's gripping you by your hand. He's going to hold you. He's going to secure you. He's going to settle you. He's going to settle you. Listen, God is going to make it to where you can become established. You can become hopeful. You become full. Listen, I know it looks like you're falling and it feels like you've been on a teeter-totter too long and you've been on the Ferris wheel and you've gone around one time too many. But you need to understand God is the God of control. And he's not going to let you go. You, look, if he's holding your hand right before your nose goes under and you're about to drown, he pulls you out of the water. Right when you're about to slip off the edge of the mountain and fall and plummet to your death, he holds you in the midair. Thank God he always holds my hand when I slip and when I slumber. Thank God he grips me in his grace and he snatches me out of that torture and he sets my feet on a solid rock, a rock of peace and a rock of hope. Thank God this morning. God is breathing. I just need to stop. And inhale. Amen. 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 Let me move on, my goodness. But look at this, what he says. I'm going to keep you. But look, here's your purpose. Number one, you're a light of the Gentiles. God didn't call you to hide your light under the bushel. You are the light of the world. Set your candle on the candlestick. Let it give light to everybody that's in the room. You need to understand you have purpose to bring light to the world. You've been, you've been given purpose, number two, to open blind eyes. That's in verse 7. You've been given purpose to open blind eyes. You've been given purpose to bring out the prisoners from the prison. You've been given purpose to, for those that sit in darkness out of the prison house. God still has given you a purpose to rescue the lost souls. I need you this morning to get a breath of God. This church needs you this morning to get the breath of God. This community, this city, this region, we need a church full of God's power to go into all the world and rescue the lost. We need you to stop in hell. They need the gospel of Jesus Christ. Verse 8 says, I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory I will not give to another. Neither my praise to graven images. Behold the former things that are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I will tell you of them. Listen, I love this scripture because it's almost a word of prophecy that you can write on your refrigerator. God is breathing into you, and He wants to declare a new work in your life. How many of you need a new promise this morning? How many of you are down on your luck, and you're upside down, and you're inside out? How are tired of what used to be and you need God to give you a new word and a new promise and a new covenant. Listen, God is declaring a new work in your life this morning. You thought you were coming to hear uh, another traditional sermon, but I want to prophesy into your life. God has given you and declaring a new word of you. I don't know about you, but I need a new word that you've spoken into my life. The Bible says old things are passed away. All things are become new. God is declaring a new work in your life. You ought to celebrate. Stop. Everybody do this. Inhale. God is declaring a new work in your life. The breath of God is blowing in this room to declare a new work in your life. Amen. Verse 10 says, sing a new song unto the Lord. Sing a new song unto the Lord and His praise from the end of the earth. You that go down to the sea and all that is therein, the isles and the inhabitants thereof. Listen, this morning you've got reasons to sing new songs. If the melody has left your heart, if all you can drum up is, is songs of sadness and mournful moans, you need to stop and inhale because Jesus Christ has given you reasons to sing new songs. It's time that you open up your life and say, God, breathe life into me again. I allow my body not to be filled with the morsels of the world, but the breath of God. God, I've been through enough. I'm hard and cold and broken. God, what I need is your breath to be blown into my body. God, I want to inhale your power. I want to inhale your hope. I want to inhale but I'm not living. Breathe on me, O oh God, that I might live and sing a new song. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's still power in the blood of Jesus. You need to inhale. There's still deliverance in the blood of Jesus. You need to inhale. There's still victory in the name of Jesus. You need to inhale. You feel defeated and lonely and addicted, but there's still hope. Inhale. I know it looks like the devil's got you between a rock and a hard place. I know it seems like your family's in the... In backed into a corner and there's no coming out. You need to stop and inhale. There's a way out of your situation. It's Jesus Christ, the righteous Son of God. He is your way out. Believe in Him. Inhale His breath. My Lord and 
with my Lord, Pastor Chris, my Mar, it's too late for me. Anybody ever felt that, Pastor Chris? It's too late for me. My heart is already broken. My life is already messed up. As a matter of fact, I feel like I'm already dead. I live in a hopeless situation. The army has been destroyed. I don't know what I'm going to do. Here's what you're going to listen to. Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me. And He carried me out in the Spirit of the Lord. And He set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. You know this whole story. Verse 2 says, And He caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there was very many in an open valley. Lo, they were very dry. And He said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I said, Oh God, you know. And again he said to me, prophesy unto these bones and saying to them, O oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Listen to this. Thus saith the Lord, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. Hallelujah. The bones have been destroyed by the problems of the war. The bones have been uh, have laid dead and dormant with a lack of activity. It looks like everything's hopeless. Bone is separated from bone and muscles are no longer there. There's just a valley of dry bones. But God says, and I want to speak this into your life. Behold, I will cause my breath to enter into you and you shall live. Stop and inhale. The breath of God is going to enter into your life. Stop and inhale. But Brother Chris, I'm barely breathing. But Brother Chris, I'm miserable. Brother Chris, I've messed up too many times. No, you haven't or you wouldn't be in this church. Brother Chris, I've already committed the sin of blasphemy. The Spirit of God is not drawing me. Listen, if the Spirit of God was done with you, you would not be in this church. You'd be out somewhere. But because you're in this church, I know God's got a fresh breath to breathe into your life. You just need to stop and inhale. Six says, and I will cause, I will say, I will lay sinews upon you, and I will bring up the flesh, and I will cover your skin, and, and, and I will put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Who is he talking to? A bunch of dead, dry bones. He's talking to an army that used to be, a person that's been defeated, a person that's just been dead, gone, and hopeless. He's saying, I'm going to put flesh back on you. I'm going to breathe in you and you shall live. But here's the best part. And you will know that I am the Lord. This morning, some of you are all familiar with life, but you need to get familiar with who the Lord God is. He's the one in charge of your life. Amen. If you're already in a valley of dead bones and a place of hopelessness, inhale. He's breathing life into you. Inhale. You, if your broken pieces are scattered around the world, he, they're coming back together. Inhale. You're about to rise up and fight again. Inhale. God is about to breathe life back into your life. Inhale. You're going to be a person of joy again. Inhale. You're going to be a person of peace again. Inhale. You're going to be a person of victory again. Stop and inhale. God is breathing into your life. Inhale. Somebody give God praise in this house. Job 27. Listen to what Job says. You know what all Job went through. Had everything. Lost everything. Body covered with sores. He says, As God liveth, who hath taken away my judgment, and the Almighty, who hath vexed my soul. Verse 3 says, All the while my breath is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. Yes, sir. The whole time I'm miserable. The whole time I'm down on my luck. The whole time I'm, I'm being plagued with sores. The whole time my, my friends are telling me to curse God and die. The whole time my wife is walking around telling me that surely you've done wrong. Why don't you get out of misery? Listen, Job says the whole time I'm in misery, the breath of God was still in my nostrils. In other words, you're not dead yet. There's still life in your body. Listen, and Job says there speak negative. I will not allow wickedness to come out. My tongue will not utter deceit. I refuse to allow the breath that God has given me to be a breath of negativity. I will begin to speak life and praise and worship. And I encourage you this morning, while God is breathing into you,
your spirit. Become a person not that complains and whines yes. and doubts, and, but become a person that will raise hands yes. and say, God, yes. I might be down on my love, but the spirit of the Lord is still breathing in you. Yes. You need to stop and inhale. Let us be like the psalmist. In Psalms 150, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and the dance. Praise Him with the stringed instruments and the organs. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that what hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. God has breathed life into you. I don't shouting victory right now. Sister Sandra, if you'll come, listen to what Jesus says in John chapter 20, verse 21. And Jesus said to them, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so now I send you. But listen to this verse. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. And he said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. How did he do it? The same way he did to Adam in a pile of dirt. Right. He breathed life into that pile of dirt. Now that God is looking into a church and He's saying, I want to blow my power once again into your spirit. You may look like your dad and gone. You may feel hopeless and helpless. You may be discouraged and broken. You need to stop and inhale. The breath of God is still blowing into your spirit. You need to be encouraged. You need to stand tall and go, you know what? I've been giving up. I've been telling the devil, okay, devil, I'm going to surrender. No, 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 no. The only person I'm going to surrender to is King Jesus. I'm going to inhale His breath. I'm going to inhale His life. The same God that breathed in Genesis and the same God that breathed on the church is the same God breathing and rising from Just stop and inhale. Yeah. He wants to produce life in you. Are you lifeless? I know physically you got your heart beating and you're here. But are you spiritually alive? Are you dead? Stop. Inhale. He's breathing life into your spirit. You just got to say, okay, God. <clears throat> There's still chances for you to live. There's still chances for you to walk in power. Tonight I'm going to preach a, a sermon that's almost could be a continuation. High energy and high power is the name of tonight's sermon. For some reason, the Lord woke me up Wednesday night. My family and I went to Gatlinburg. I woke up late, I, I don't know, I guess maybe it was early Thursday morning, 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, and I was preaching this message. I got up that morning, I tried to find scripture, and I couldn't figure out how I was going to do it. I got up the next morning and started searching scripture, and God began to lay all these scriptures, and I wrote them down on a, on a, in, in a book, and I said, all right, God. And then I began to feel like I needed to preach about the energy and the power of God tonight, which means this to me. If I know enough of God, and I know enough about preaching, here's what that means to me. There are people in this room that you're null and void of real life. There's people in this room that you're broken. You're heavy hearted. Life has treated you bad. And you need God to breathe on you. You need God to produce this power in your life. You need God to produce resurrection in you. Are you willing to say, Brother Chris, I want to stop and inhale. Brother Chris, life really is bad. You don't even know the half of it. I put on this beautiful, happy face to come to church, but in reality, my life is in shambles. I'm already in the valley of dry bones. Pieces are already put all over the field. There's no, listen, you've always thought there's no hope for you. You've always believed there's no hope for your family. There's no hope for your relationship. You need to stop, and you need to end it. Stop believing that He still breathes life. He's still blowing. He wants you to live this morning. Will you stand with me?